back in the day, they, 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 you want any drug, cocaine, weed, prostitute, everybody like... Congregated uh, here. Right here where I'm walking on used to be one of the biggest Section 8 housing projects in the entire city of San Francisco. Right here in Hunters Point in the southeastern realm of town. But right where he is parked, that entire little corridor and that entire little intersection right here is the one way in, one way out, entrance and exit, as I was telling you about. Say if you're a different color, you cannot enter here. Right, yeah, oh, right, oh, I know, right, they, they, right. Not, it wasn't the cops that ran this place, right. it was the citizens themselves, huh? Insane. So, so this, they, they, they make a new building, right? And then they, they push the, the homeless people to, to near, our, near this place. Is oh, is there an uh, encampment right outside? They come from other places where they come here. Oh, are you see? And just the preliminary part of the exact encampment that that security guard was informing us about resides right here. But here, another uh, image or view or perception, whatever you want to call it, of the encampment that security was talking to us about over there. And uh, as you could say, not only are we having a tough time getting through here, but uh, check out the surrounding area. Yeah, it's not not very not very presentable, guys. Two jacks, no idea. Maybe some type of eatery or something. Yeah, uh, resided exactly where the 49ers used to play until they moved to Santa Clara about eight to nine years ago. So this exact property was uh, where Candlestick Park sat for many, 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 not only years, but an extreme plethora of decades as well. Big Block, AKA Harbor Road, uh, where the rap group RBL Posse is from. If you've ever heard of the song, there's a bluebird on my shoulder, should I kill it? I can't rap or sing for stuff. Can't be swearing. In a weird way, considering that it is on a hill, these little walkways up to the housing facilities. It reminds me a lot of Rio de Janeiro. You see a lot of this considering that Rio is so hilly and when you're on the way up to the favela or the slums in Brazil, it's the same exact thing. A lot of walkways, pathways, and staircases that lead you into the hoods. Guys, Private Eye Travel Guy checking in with you guys live from San Francisco, California on this beautiful Thursday. But the episode that we have at hand today is going to be a lot more dark and a lot more ominous than the weather entails. Uh, this exact section of San Francisco that sits along the southeast side of town, sits right along the shoreline, is called Hunter's Point. And the exact property that we are walking on right now used to belong to the Alice Griffith housing community, aka Double Rock as the hood would call it. And this used to be one of, if not the largest, Section 8 properties in the entire city. It rested here. Um, don't know the exact history on it, but these buildings were so old, they were so decrepit, that I'm going to guess that these things have been here. This exact foundation that you're seeing right here, where there used to be so much project housing, I would say at least since the 40s or the 50s, especially considering, considering right behind me, those exact buildings that you're looking at, that is where the bay uh, resides. And this used to be one of the biggest shipyards in the entire San Francisco Bay, where the Navy would spend the most time. So during the time that we had a naval base over there sitting right on the shoreline, right behind me, this is where they would station a lot of the military and Navy related troops. And they lived here for many, many, many decades. And as you can imagine, all of the uh, toxic waste, the fuel, the oil that spilled in that exact shoreline right behind those exact buildings is one of the many reasons that people claim these exact grounds, the soil amongst the bay line of that exact area that we're pointing at um, was extremely toxic, poisonous, and one of the main reasons that this was not a very uh, desired area to live, but it is insane to me that I've spent many, many hours in this area. You ask any Hunter's Point representative, this was the jungle. One way in, one way out. Security, uh, security fence line at the front. Speed bumps everywhere. It was, uh, you get into a high speed pursuit with the cops. 
yeah, you were in trouble out here. Uh, you were most likely getting caught. It was structured that exact way for that reason. But it is a pleasure to welcome you here to Hunter's Point, the southeastern side of town of San Francisco. And uh, let's go continue to explore the exact area and uh, find some cool stuff. Tune in. And right there, that gray RAV4 was the very, very courteous security guard that allowed me access to this awesome property. But right where he is parked, that entire little corridor and that entire little intersection right here is the one way in, one way out entrance and exit, as I was telling you about. Oh, spend the day, they, 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 you want any drug, cocaine, weed, positive, everybody like congregated here place, there know? was a lot of activity yeah, yeah. coming out of here man prostitution not only drugs but murder as well right this right, is one right. of the so they say if you're a different color you cannot enter here right, yeah oh, right. oh i know right they, they right. not it wasn't the cops that ran this place right. it was the citizens themselves huh insane so, so i said then then uh, well, why they abandon this place i asked him you know, he said well because there were too much gangs and everything so they try to you know get rid of this place and did they and another huge thing about notating about Double Rock is the fact that this site was funded not only by the city, but by other entities as well. So when they said that we're just gonna tear this thing down due to uh, being so decrepit and just run the hell down and things ready to fall apart and we're not gonna invest any more money into it and we're just gonna tear it down, I'm going to show you exactly what the city and the investors did in order to accommodate the poor people that had to vacate this exact land that we were walking on. They were kicked out after the announcement. So the good news is they told the residents, hey, we're not gonna ship you out to EPA or San Jose or anything like that. We're just gonna go ahead and build from scratch right behind where you guys used to rest your heads. So it does suck to be kicked out of your housing community for nostalgic purposes, but also the inconvenience of having to move things and deal with legal battles and all that. But they said, we're gonna build a new housing community right behind where you used to reside. And right there, people, is what the city of San Francisco and other investors decided to develop to accommodate to the residents that used to live on this exact old piece of land, the old Double Rock. Old Double Rock right here, new double rock right there and interestingly enough one thing uh, one other thing i wanted to notate is um there were uh, legal proceedings and all sorts of mishaps and certain people qualified for the new uh new community but other people weren't invited things like that um and i hear that there's still uh, these ongoing legal battles um and concerns about people that were not invited and were left homeless and just nowhere else to go once the city of San Francisco said they were going to demolish this exact site. So uh, shout out and prayers to those people that were uh, left without a home after they decided to tear this, uh, tear this exact community down. Um, anyone else that has any legal concerns or knows anything about that exact dilemma, go ahead and drop in the comments what you know and uh, how the situations are handled. And another thing that I did want to mention is the fact that the people over on this side of the property, the Eastern realm right here, not only did they have the advantage of being close to the basketball park, but also they had a little bit more of a view, especially before the new housing development that we just mentioned right here in the background. That used to not be there, where there used to be a little bit more of a view of the bay, which was rad. So if you did reside over in this realm, um, it was the more advantageous side, I would say. And uh, another thing I do kind of like about it, it's kind of over here in the sticks of the property um, where I don't think you're gonna run into too many encounters um, as you are on the opposite side, more toward the blood and the guts and the interior side of the property. They, uh, did he tell you? Know? So when it came to like people being replaced over to that housing project, was it like a select few or did all of them have guaranteed housing? Do you know anything about that? Uh, I, I believe, you know, when, when you moved, this is like like a one-story house, right? Okay. So they build more. Yeah. So it's people option. People that want to get get, get rid of this uh, like, like, they like, like evil lifestyle, they probably move out, you know? I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> and and then some people all oh, want a better place that they move to, 
they have no place to go, then they go, go there. San Francisco you know? is running out of affordable housing though, huh? If yeah, you were to yeah, pass yeah. on the proposal that you're going to move over there, I'm not sure how many more options the people that got kicked out of here had, right? Yeah. They probably shipped out of the Bay Area, unfortunately. Yeah. That's an ongoing also, story. like, when there's a 49er game in, like, Right in the day, you know. Yeah, I remember. Right? Isn't it crazy how close it was they, to they, Candlestick? They, they, they get a uh, free like hacking money. They, oh, that's oh interesting. Yeah, yeah. They were hustling back that way too. So, so they say this is a place like you can harvest a lot of money here. They, they, they make a new building, right? And then they they push the the homeless people to to near our, near this place. Is oh, is there an yeah. encampment right outside? They out from other places so they come here. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, so... The city they, really told them, we're going to transport you from over here? No, no, they, they just say, hey, you cannot be here. So they, don't, they don't know where to go, so they, they come here. They came over here to but the they, abandoned, they just completely run like, down, like, like vacant lot. Yeah. That makes sense. So they're all right... No, what? because they, they renovated, they, they develop, like, like make, make a new building, you know? So mm -hmm. they don't want them to live around there. Yeah. Interesting and just the preliminary part of the exact encampment that that security guard was informing us about resides right here borderline to the very entrance of the double rock housing facility former double rock housing facility that is but yeah all sorts of clutter and uh typical stuff that you see in the city of san francisco except uh when Double Rock was here, I remember this little corridor being rough, but now it's a different type of rough. I think it would be more scrapers, people dealing dope, strapped with that piece, things like that, gangsta stuff, but I don't think it would be straight. Homeless, uh, homeless encampment like it is now. The exact Alice Griffith housing community sign remains here to this day, which is really, really awesome. But here, another uh, image or view or perception, whatever you want to call it, of the encampment that security was talking to us about over there not too long ago. bad guys jeez uh like i said different things would be going going on right in that little perimeter but it was definitely not an encampment four or five years ago really sad how far we've come and then right when you hop out of double rock it feels like you're back in the city of daily city man tell me that doesn't look like dc exact same type of structure on the housing And guys, right down this exact avenue that I'm pointing down, that exact way, we will do a spot check on the new Double Rock housing facility. But also, this exact road used to get you to Candlestick Park, home of the San Francisco 49ers, the best football team in the franchise history of the NFL. So another thing you're gonna notice about Hunter's Point is uh, it is so isolated out here in the San Francisco area that uh, they just don't have the resources or the capabilities for supermarkets and places where you could gather fresh food and healthy food. And yeah, just as you saw back there in terms of the Double Rock housing community and this entire little pocket right here, um, really all they have is pretty much Double Rock liquor right there, man. It's really uh, sad how not only investors don't even think about making a move out here, but how about the city go ahead, goes ahead? If the investors aren't gonna do anything, then how about the city does something about it? Here's another market, H&K Market. Appears to be another liquor store. Interestingly enough, a relatively innocent looking individual right there. Wonder if we could uh, see him around. I wonder if that indicates that there is some um, gentrification going on the exact uh, Hunter's Point area and this is the exact avenue that I was just pointing out on foot that leads you directly to Candlestick Park and uh, as you could say not only are we having a tough time getting through here but uh, 
check out this surrounding area. Yeah, it's not not very not very presentable, guys. Two jacks, no idea. Maybe some type of eatery or something. And as promised, guys, there she blows. The new housing community for the replacement of the Alice Griffith housing community right here as we speak. Pretty presentable looking. Obviously built only three or four years ago. Yeah, they better look spiffy. Um, don't know if there's any type of underground par uh, garage parking lot, but obviously it looks like there are a lot more people stationed out here than the original facility. Yeah, so right where we were exploring, exploring, right behind this exact grounds that we are driving on. And like I said, before this stuff was built, right over there in the distance resides the bay. So um, the perspective was quite nice for some of those old, old units at the old facility that we just got done exploring on foot. Got a roller coming our way. It's probably a pretty hot spot for PD. And as promised, just a two minute drive or even an eight to 10 minute walk, just from the hood that we just came from, right in the Double Rock housing area, uh, resided exactly where the 49ers used to play until they moved to Santa Clara about eight to nine years ago. So this exact property was uh, where Candlestick Park sat for many, 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 not only years, but an extreme plethora of decades as well. And now it just sits here and collects dust and does nothing. We've been here for coming up on eight, nine years, like I just said, and the city nor the investors, nobody wants to make a move on this thing. And one of the uh, most wealthy areas of the world, money is just sitting there waiting to be made, whether it's housing, stores, shopping, I don't know, but something, they claimed that it was gonna be built years and years ago and nothing ever happened. And according to the conspiracy theories, um, like I said, in terms of military and Navy usage that sat right along the bay line right there, um, people are claiming, or there was tests done on this exact soil and the grounds that we were walking on. And uh, they're saying that it is most definitely um, toxic to say the least, but there could be radioactive activity as well in the area. So that theory is making sense on why this exact lot remains here to this day and does absolutely nothing. But right through that gate, right there, many, many good times, thousands and thousands of hours, people will pull up here at 6.30 a.m. and get the tailgate started. And I guess another reason or another theory that I might have in terms of the real estate investors backing out, COVID may have messed things up, just a bit but also it's the fact that you know these investors they're from out of the area cities new york chicago miami god knows where but they don't know um the, the, the hidden gems and the territory well enough to know that hunter's point where this exact property is that they invested in without even knowing it they haven't done enough exploring around the area to know that it is a true hood and one of the biggest hoods in the entire bay um, but once they come to find out and realize, holy shit, like what did we buy and what did we invest in? It's like, yeah, man, that's what you get. Like it says San Francisco by the city on the mailing address, but you haven't done enough exploration of the exact area that you bought in. So they bought something that's in a very, very questionable area as we could see, um, previously, um, to this exact clip that I'm recording that we're, uh, we are in a hood to say the least. And another thing about Candlestick that I just absolutely loved was like opposing fans that came over here like, oh, San Francisco, it's a soft ass city, you know, filled with like liberal softies and like they're politically woke and uh, yeah, it's gonna be okay. And like, it's a soft city, I'll be safe. But when they, uh, I've taken the bus numerous times to games at Candlestick and like the opposing fans, you could just like, we're cruising through Hunter's Point, like trying to get to the game and you see dope dealing going on. 
hookers at every corner, fucking dead kittens in the middle of the road, just not, not the best environment. And you just, you just see their facial expression, just like, God damn, so this is the real San Francisco, huh? Fuck, they thought it was all fun and games out here, but it's really not. Crazy to think about, the irony. So this is another big thing about the Hunters Point San Francisco is just it's very, very industrial. Uh, before these became different types of businesses, like we were talking about Navy and military related purposes, I'm sure there was all sorts of uh, cargo and equipment shipment and um, installation, production of products, things like that in all of these warehouses. But this is uh, Hunters Point for you. Just. Uh, not much going on other than uh, Section 8 affordable housing and warehouses and a bunch of industrial stuff. A lot of blue collar work out here too. guys so we're going into an area of hunters point that i thought was worth notating it is called big block aka harbor road uh where the rap group rbl posse is from if you ever heard the song there's a bluebird on my shoulder should i kill it i can't rap or sing for stuff can't be swearing on these videos but they're from this exact i don't know about the exact i think they are right from the uh, the avenue because they would rep it hard in their songs so we are getting to the tip top of the hill which is where you want to get to when you come to big block so right here is some of the newer section 8 housing on the top of the hill right near big block harbor road um not quite sure when this was built but yeah it looks pretty new i'd imagine um, early two foul wows, maybe even mid, but these things do look nice, but just because they look nice doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing on the interior that is more threatening. So don't ever, basically, don't judge a book by its cover. And yeah, just uh, similar to like painting a shitty house, like a new color, you're basically putting lipstick on a pig, right? It's the same exact theory or analogy. The views in Hunter's Point are nice though. And never really noticed this over here, this vacant lot. Looks like it used to be a rec center of some kind, but the place has obviously been abandoned and has seen better days. Very sad, that's exactly what this uh, highly dense, populous Hunter's Point Community Youth Park, yeah, I must have went under years ago. Interesting, I never noticed that. But that's exactly what a community like this needed and unfortunately, I guess, a lack of funding and some financial cuts by the city led to its demise. Then we got like real estate development going on here. Who knows what this used to be? Huge triplex that apparently has seen better days and they're probably gonna start to rebuild and then charge an arm and a leg and try to keep, uh, kick, kick the hood out of the hood which is just uh, really, really sad that they're trying to gentrify this area of San Fran. And this is it, guys. This is Big Block right here. This is more what I'm talking about. The older, more nitty gritty Section 8 housing that I was looking for. However, I did want to notate right over here to the right, you could totally see that these uh, Housing communities have a very, very good view of the bay, and here comes a roller right here. I think he saw me earlier as well, but uh, let's just make sure. All right, we're back on it, guys. Yeah, but just block upon block, unit upon unit, it's deep up here on the hill. Wish I could slap some tunes, you know, some Larry June who's directly from here. That would be cool to slap some Uncle Larry. But uh, due to copyright issues, 
ran some music in the background in my video on Stockton, California. If you haven't peeped that, check it out as soon as you can. Um, but yeah, uh, YouTube waived some type of like copyright claim due to me like just simply bumping some music in the background. So I can't do it this time around. Looks like a trap for sure. As much as I want to get out on foot and explore that area, I don't know if it would be too wise if I did, guys. Views, views upon views. This is apparently Kiska Street right here. I found that quite ironic, a piece of luggage just sitting at the very top of an older van in the hood when San Francisco is well known for their carjackings, aka their bippings. Um, they have a free target right there if you want to go ahead and uh, run the risk of uh, stealing some hood ass guy's bag, go for it, but uh, I'm not going to be involved in that and I hope, I know that criminals are dumb and all these low lives that are bashing windows and looking for people's valuables maybe they're smart enough highly doubt it because they're dumb as hell but uh i hope that they're not dumb enough to go ahead and uh steal from the hood because there is street justice here it's not the cops that are going to get involved but it's the residents of this area they're going to bash your freaking head in guys here we are big block right here gerald avenue to be exact but essentially the same thing um, at the very top of the hill, as you can see, these views are just absolutely spectacular. I mean, my God, this community, if there's one saving grace about potentially living in a hood, it's just these views are incredible, man. You know, the investors, I'm sure they're on the prowl to uh, kick the hood out of the hood, but I hope that liberal San Francisco takes its citizens' backs and don't let any type of development or reinvestment occur in these exact areas. In a weird way, considering that it is on a hill, these little walkways up to the housing facilities, it reminds me a lot of Rio de Janeiro. You see a lot of this considering that Rio is so hilly and when you're on the way up to the favela or the slums in Brazil, it's the same exact thing. A lot of walkways, pathways and staircases that lead you into the hoods. So I guess that San Francisco has some relatability and similarity to the great city of Rio de Janeiro. Always remain a top five city in my book. But yeah, just those views over there to the right are quite magnificent. There's some projects for sure. And keep in mind, back in the day, I'm sure it was a tidbit rougher up here, but for the most part, maybe even side curiosity. Take a walk up one of these stair staircases to bring back the nostalgic vibes of uh, Rio de Janeiro. Hey, hey boy. Cute. Hey. Ah, he's, he's, he's cute. Hey, hey Perito. Hey, Perito. Hey, boy. Hi. Hey, boy. Hi, Perito. Oh, have a good one. So, if it's uh, not the citizens that like me here in Hunter's Point, it's definitely the dogs. The Peritos. I was going to walk up there until I saw that sweet innocent boy run up on me. Didn't know if he was friendly at first. And this shit just stretches forever, guys. Stack upon stack, boxes upon boxes. 
It runs deep, deep, deep. This will be the chosen one. Just a quick little peek. Mind our own business. It's strictly for documentary purposes and we'll be okay. I'm doing it for the Rio de Janeiro vibes, man. Reminds me a lot of Rio. And the fact that you're overlooking water too. It's another thing similar to it. Surprisingly, like freakishly quiet guys. I'm telling you, I think that um, Unfortunately, there is some gentrification even going on in this little corridor. I remember it being just a little bit more lively And people would be out and about enjoying times on their patios and right now it's just really really quiet You know people could be hard at work trying to pay the bills, but I uh, I unfortunately don't think a lot of these a lot of these have either been abandoned or they're just flat out not in use right now. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this episode. If you like the content, like, share, and subscribe most importantly. Uh, but I am thinking about making this a series of some kind the dark side of San Francisco the misunderstood the impoverished um, The areas that need fixing up the areas that are infested with terribleness drug addiction prostitution Drug dealing crime all that I want to cover different areas, but I thought this was a good starting point episode one Based in hunters point. Hope you liked it. Be tuned for the next one thinking about it's a tough one. I don't know. I think, I think I might cover Union Square, aka Zombie Land, but I'll keep you guys in the loop as long as you say, as long as you do exactly what I said. Like, share, and subscribe. Stay in the circle. Going to cover a new, new area of San Francisco in the next one. See you on that one.